Hey everybody, and welcome to another Jamovi tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about partial correlations. And there's a reason why I'm talking about partial correlations, because it's going to bleed into another video that I have planned for the channel. So before we jump into partial correlations, which is a separate module in Jamovi, I want to go ahead and let everyone know that I am using version 2.0.1. Um, I, I actually re realized today when I was updating my version to this before I started recording, that this is actually a Mac only update. So Mac OS only update. Uh, Windows is still at version 2.0.0. So while I have the updated uh, uh, version for Mac OS, don't worry if you are using a PC and watching these tutorials, that's not the case here. <laughs> so in any case, what I wanted to do here is open up some data and we're going to grab some data from the data library because all we need to do is find a set of data that has bunch of continuous variables. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go up to the hamburger menu here and um, we are going to open. We're going to go to data library. And uh, here you can see that when you install all of these modules up, up top and there's some flashing, there are going to be some flashing in this video because I just added some new ones. Videos are coming on those flashing ones. That's why I added them. <laughs> but in any case, I have all of these uh, um, data sets folders available. And uh, in a previous video, I told you where to find them if you wanted to just find the CSV files that have been used in this particular case uh, for these particular modules. So check out that video for more. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up one of the default CSVs, this big five by Dolan et al. in 2009, because it has a bunch, it, it really is only a data set built for correlations. It only has five. So we double click on that and it's going to open up the data set. Again, try to ignore the flashing. Apologies for that one. But it all just has these five variables, neuroticism, extroversion, openness, agreeableness, and conscientiousness. And uh, let's, let's, uh, lengthen these a little bit. Oops, I mean, I thought it was I thought I could get the uh, Excel double click expand. So you can see all of them, all five of them. And um, we just run correlations on this. So this is the partial correlation, but I wanted to do the regular correlation first. So you can see the difference between a full Pearson's co product moment correlation between variables and then what a partial correlation module looks like. Because the partial correlation is the degree of association between two variables while controlling for other variables in the relationship that might exist as perhaps a confounding variable. So when you do a regression, you get partial correlation values and should really report those as opposed to the zero order correlations, which is just two, uh, which is just the Pearson's product moment correlation for the two variables, ignoring everything else, but really not ignoring everything else, but everything else in that relationship that might exist at the same time and might change at the same time, the covary. And so those are zero order correlations. And, and sometimes you don't want to report that. You just want to report the isolated correlation between various variables. So that's why we would have partial correlations. And I just looked the other day uh, and I saw that there was a separate module. So let's go through that. So we're going to find our correlation under the regression menu. Apologies for the uh, zoom. <laughs> it just ends up getting very pixelated, but we're going to go to regression. You can see at the top here, we've got correlation matrix, partial correlation, which is the built in module here, and then linear regression. So I have videos on linear regression and correlation, but I don't have one on partial. That's where we're at today. But let's run a correlation matrix of these five and we're just going to put them all in here. Okay, and then um, it's going to calculate that as it goes through. We do want Pearson. We want um, significant, uh, significant flags. Um, but this is the p-value here, because if we uncheck that, we don't get the p-values. We just get the correlation coefficient. So might as well. We can flag significant ones greater, uh, less than 0 0.005 or at various stages here. And I think that's what we'll do. We'll, we'll just leave it here, and we'll, we'll leave that for us to um, come back to. So let's do the partial correlation. So we go to regression here. Um, click. There we go. Partial correlation. And you can see that when it slows up, this is slightly different, though it's seemingly the same. There are only a couple of differences. So first and foremost, you do get to choose whether or not you want Pearson, Spearman, or Kendall's Tau B, just like the correlation matrix one. Um, you can also specify your hypotheses for your partial correlations. You can get the partial or the semi-partial. The semi-partial correlation, or sometimes referred to as the part correlation, it, I believe uh, it is referred to as the part correlation in the uh, correlation matrix that you can get while doing regression in IBM's SPSS. Um, it's been a while since I've used SPSS. I can't even, <laughs> I, can't, I wouldn't be able to open it if I tried because I don't have a license for it anymore. So I believe part, uh, the, the part and partial are the terms used for these correlations in SPSS. Anyways, the semi-partial correlation is, is where you hold one variable in a multivariable control situation. So partial being adding a control variable here and then the other variables we want to compare in here. So the control goes here. But a semi-partial only controls this, takes this variable and controls it against X or Y, but not both, okay? So it's really a unique comparison amongst two variables of control and, while controlling for one. Sometimes people view it as more relevant than a partial correlation because 
um, you want to maybe hold um, control for something that co-varies with your X variable, but then see the full effect on the Y variable or vice versa. So sometimes that is as useful. We can sh I can show you both and we can do both um, here and I, I plan to as well. So we're going to leave partial checked and we're going to, yeah, well, let's go ahead and, and flag significant correlations here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in extroversion and openness in my variables and I'm going to control for neuroticism, okay? So extroversion and openness. If we go back up to our um, main correlation matrix, our zero order correlations, we've got extroversion and openness right on top of each other. And I chose that because it's just going to be easier to find. And if we go to openness, because we're going to follow the bottom part of the diagonal, if we go to openness here, it is correlated with extroversion at positive 0.267. And if we come down here, we can see that controlling for neuroticism, the correlation between extroversion and openness actually gets a little bit bigger, which is extremely cool. We can also throw in agreeableness and conscientiousness into this mix and get a much larger situation going on where neuroticism isn't a part of the matrix because we're just controlling for neuroticism in each of these and we can we can see what we can see here so extroversion changes a little bit openness to extroversion uh openness to extra oh we just did that one Duh. <laughs> agreeableness to extroversion so agreeableness extroversion 0 0.055 it got smaller as we can see here it got smaller um quite quite a bit smaller actually eh, yeah uh, you could still you could still make it 0.01, I don't think it matters. Uh, agreeableness to openness doesn't change whatsoever, which means that neuroticism has no impact on that zero order correlation, which is interesting to note. And then we have a few negative uh, things here, conscientiousness and extroversion. Um, actually, conscientiousness to extroversion, um, it's a little bit closer to zero. Actually, no, it flips. I just see that. It's hard going back and forth, so apologies if I've misstate something, but it looks like we're going from extroversion, yeah, conscientiousness and extroversion is positive, no relationship though to negative no relationship so and then over here negative 0.013 goes to negative 0.019 so there's literally no change there and then um consciousness to agreeableness looks like it gets smaller yeah we go from 0.16 to 0.12 so 0.04 less for that partial correlation now we can also do this for semi-partial so hopefully uh I'll have to open up a new, so let me go back to partial to change it back to the partial and let me open up a new one so we can have it open here. So we're going to control for neuroticism, of course, and then we're going to put the rest of them into the variables box and we're going to do semi-partial. So here we're going to control neuroticism for, um, for these variables here. Okay, but we're also, it's going, it's going to get controlled twice. It's going to get controlled for neuroticism in, so neuroticism is going to be controlled in extroversion versus openness against extroversion and then against openness. And then for openness and agreeableness, it's going to be controlled for openness and then agreeableness and same so on for agreeableness and conscientiousness, which is why you get these two different um, matrices. Okay? Um, so we've got two notes, controlling for non-racism, variation from the control variables only removed from the variables in the columns, which is why you get two, which is why you get both sides of the matrix, right? both sides of the matrix. So here we're controlling for, um, so in extroversion, we're controlling for neuroticism. And what ends up happening is we get this correlation with openness, which is not controlled for. But if we control for openness and extroversion, this is what it looks like so on and so forth. So you can see a few changes. They're not meant to really be that much different. I mean, if you've got a stable, a stable relationship between two variables, controlling for them doesn't really change a whole lot between partial and semi-partial or part and partial, but it could change a lot from zero order, which is why we would control for variables. Um, by default, if we go into regression into linear regression, we can get a new set of information here and we can get model code, and that's not I forget exactly. It's been a while since I've done it. Uh, as I as I as I thought, I don't. Yeah, as I thought, linear regression, the module, the base module for linear regression, doesn't actually come with part and partial. You have to um, you have to do them separately. So there you go. That's so. If you want to get go beyond correlation matrix, or you're doing a linear regression, if you're just seeing correlations, you probably will just do a regular correlation matrix and get zero order correlations. But if you are doing a linear regression, it does make sense to um, talk about partial correlations um, and semi-partial correlations or part correlations because of their practicality in referencing relationships while controlling for variables. Of course, that's why you add to the right um, of linear regression. That's why you add variables to the line to control for various aspects, age, gender, all of these kinds of things. And so including the partial and part correlations or semi-partial correlations is beneficial over zero order correlations. And that's how you do partial correlations in Jamovi.
If you like this video, consider leaving a like. If you like this content, subscribe for more of these kinds of videos, as well as other site content and fun stuff. At least I think it's fun. Thank you for watching.